Hey, this is John out of Wausau, Wisconsin. You're watching Trucking with Josh on TJV. Stay tuned. Notice anything different on my truck? I bought this new bug deflector to try to keep bugs out of your face and out of my face. So you can see it down there now, eh? It doesn't look that big. It actually looks pretty small, but apparently that's enough to keep the bugs off the windshield, or at least a lot of bugs off the windshield. Just the air hits it and then it gets shot up over the truck, eh? I'm really excited about it. It's nice that they had a chrome one in stock too. So now when you're sitting here, hopefully there won't be so many bugs right in front of the camera. We'll see. So I did arrive here to pick up my truck. They fixed the fan, the interior fan. Let's see if it works. Let's start it up first. There you are, my baby. Oh, my girl. It's a good girl. Okay. And yeah, there's the fan. Perfect. They had to put a brand new fan in there. Is that open? Why is it not coming out of there? Okay, there it is. Oh, it just took a second for the vents to change. There we go, beautiful. Yeah, my old fan, before it stopped working, got all loud. It sounded like it was rubbing on something, like a buzzing sound. So I knew it was on the way out. But uh, yeah. Excited that this all came through. Turned out well, and that bug deflector. So we'll see how that thing works. We're leaving tomorrow. We have a load going down, a load of lumber going down to Waterloo, Iowa. And then I have a reload waiting for me to pick up Friday morning in Chicago. So it's Tuesday today. So I'm gonna be leaving tomorrow, Wednesday. Around a, a little bit before noon, I'm gonna leave the house. Probably try to leave the yard by about noon. And it'll be about a 24 hour trek, including sleeping down to Waterloo, Iowa. I could probably get down there in one day of driving. It's pretty much exactly 11 hours to get there from here without any traffic or anything. So I could probably leave in the afternoon. We might get there in one day. We'll find out. But got the truck back. We're back at it. I feel complete again. All right. You know what time it is? Do you know what time it is? Oh, they're excited. You should be excited too. Look at this, look at this, look at this stone. Not, not, not just that. Oh yeah. There's at least one, two, three, one, two, three chickens that gave their lives for what's about to happen. We can't let them die in vain. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Just wash my hands. Oh, I'm so good. Oh. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm so excited. Hey, there's a wife there, too. Yes. A wife and some a couple of friends. Come on. Yes, this is going to be good. Mm hmm. Put one there. Yeah, there's three chickens that gave their lives for this. Oh boy, we're gonna cook them all. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, if I roll over like this, would you give me some chicken? Well, it's time to put this new bug deflector to the test. We're about to cross into the United States here right now. Uh, we've got our load of lumber all tied down behind us. Obviously, if we've made it this far already, it better be tied down. I'm gonna stop in Pembina, North Dakota, just over the border here. And then we've got quite a ways to go today. Yeah, we got uh, let's say 975 kilometers to go yet. How many miles would that be? Let me, let me check here. 975 kilometers. Okay, Google. Hey, oh, my Wi-Fi is connected to my GoPro. Hey, one second here. Okay, Google. How many miles is 975 kilometers? 
975 kilometers is equal to 605.837 miles. There you go. That's how many miles we got until we deliver this freight. And then I've got a load in Chicago that's taking me back here. I drop that trailer, hook onto a different trailer. It's like a big tank, like one of those big fuel tanks again. I'm taking that out to Michigan. So what do you think, Diesel? You ready to go to America? You ready to go to America, man? Well, it seems that this bug deflector is doing some, some of the job it's supposed to anyways. I mean, there's still some bugs that are getting on the windshield, but I mean, it's hard to tell. It's hard to compare directly, right? But the lower part of the windshield is definitely a lot cleaner than it always is. So that's good. That's right, right about where you guys sit there, right? When you're mounted. Right now you're on my head. So you can sort of get a little bit of a better view of what's going on here. We're between Grand Forks, North Dakota and Fargo, North Dakota. I just wanted to show you what this bug deflector looks like on the highway from my point of view. I mean, it's not gonna stop all the bugs, right? It's not gonna stop, but if it stops a good portion of them, I'm happy. Make our way out of Fargo, North Dakota here. Just grab some fuel. Probably gonna go to uh, Rothesay, Minnesota again. Where I seem to make it to usually. It's been a good day so far, but it's it's a regular first day back on the road after being home for a few days. In 200 meters, take the entrance to the ride on I-29 North. Sort of tired, sort of wish I was still at home, sort of meh. But tomorrow will be better. First day on back on the road is always like this. So I'm not too sure. I think Ross says about what, another hour or so up the road? I gotta go at least to there. Then it'll be almost a full day of driving to get to our customer tomorrow. I'm just hoping they're gonna unload later into the afternoon. I gave them a call and they said they were open a full work day, which I was assuming. What's this guy doing? What's this guy doing? Will you turn him over? All right, thanks, bud. When people say that they're there for the full work day, I'm assuming they're there till at least four. But you know what? Uh, Sometimes I forget, or I often forget to double check because some people's work day is literally till 1.30 in the afternoon. So I'll give them a call back again in the morning meters. just to make sure they're there. You're very chatty today, Karen. What's going on? You miss me? Meander our way onto Interstate 94 eastbound. We came from ahead of us there. I went underneath this intersection before to grab fuel at the Flying J, which was one block south. And we're just turning back east onto Interstate 94. You know, the weather is still not too bad. It's a little chilly at night now already, but that's just being compared to summertime. And apparently this week is supposed to be really warm. So by the time you watch this video, you'll probably already know whether or not that forecast was true. Back home, they were calling for like almost plus 30 degrees this week. That's like 80s and 90s Fahrenheit. Which is good, because we thought that summer was over already. We had such a rainy August. Lots of rain. It's very chilly, very cold. But hey, maybe we'll have a warmer September. Who knows? Who knows? Can you see it off to the right in the distance there? We just left Moorhead. You know what those flashing yellow lights mean, don't you? Oh, they're hiding behind FedEx here now. Here they come. Way station, one mile. It means it's open, they want to see us. What's it actually say on the sign? It says truck and combinations over 10,000 pounds must enter way station when flashing. And out of the darkness, she comes forth. Let's see what they want. We are pretty heavy, but we're not overweight. So let's see, we're gonna drive over these preliminary scales at 30 miles per hour. Just 
under 50 kilometers an hour. Don't hit the brakes while you're going over these scales or it'll mess up your overall weights and then they'll definitely want to see you. Just sort of coast over them. That guy just turned on his high beams over there. Why are you turning on your high beams? One of my biggest pet peeves on the road. People who think they're way more important than everyone else. That they, they have to see but no one else can see. Getting their high beams. Looks like they just want me to bypass. I don't want to jinx it, but almost every time already they get me to bypass it. Why even pull me in? Why even pull me in here? Just let me go. Close the scale. You guys should be at home in bed anyways, you know? Go home, have a good supper, eat some steaks, have a barbecue. You don't need to be at work. Okay, I got one, two, three, four highway patrol vehicles there. Thanks. I wonder how often they have to chase a truck, you know, like a truck that blew the scale. I wonder how often that happens. I wonder if that happens every day. Or if it's like a very rare thing. Guess we'll never know. They never had to chase me before. That's all that matters. So we did only end up making it to Roth as they hear. I'm tired. I'm gonna go to bed. It's about 9.30 in the evening. I've got an early start tomorrow. We'll hammer down then. Oh, the first day on the road is always just, huh? A little tough sometimes. So I'm just gonna pull into my spot here in the back corner. Call it a night. Proceed to the highlighted route. Nope, Mandy. Karen, dang it, I did it again. I'm staying here the night. So that's that. Parked in our corner. I'm ready for bed. I gotta set up my bed yet. Oh, it's all up there. I take it down, roll it out. Put the sheets on it, put the blankets on it, put my pillowcase on my pillow, put my pillow on my bed, crawl under the covers and pass out in less than five seconds. It's gonna be great. So we're gonna get up around 7 a.m. tomorrow and uh, begin our pre-trip around 7.30 and we'll be out of here around 7.45. So I'll see you then. Don't forget to subscribe and make a new video pretty much every day or every day while I'm on the road anyways. We'll be on the road now for a little while. Like I was telling you before, we have this load going down to Waterloo, Iowa. Then I go to Chicago, I pick up a load that goes back to Winnipeg and then I turn around from there and I take a load down to Michigan. And from there, I'll probably have a load going back to Alberta, I'm thinking. Anyways, I'll talk to you later, guys. I'm tired. Thanks for watching.